Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm gonna talk about this plugin I have used in most of my recent tutorials. Uh, the plugin is called Trap Code Sound Keys and is uh, a plugin released by Red Giant. Uh, you probably heard of it. And if you like to do audio reacts and stuff that reacts to the music, this is a plugin I would 100% recommend you to buy. And if you want to try it out first, there is a free trial on their website. I will uh, put the link in the description. Uh, it will you will have a watermark as a big X, but you can try it and you will realize that it's worth to buy. Otherwise, you can find it on other sites, but I didn't say that. So, in today's tutorial, or maybe more like info video, I will show you a little bit more why I use this track of some kids and how it works a little bit more. Uh, I will release in the summer, I will release uh, a couple of tutorials that will include some keys. That's why I wanna uh, upload this video to show why it's so important and why I love to use it, why it's the best. Uh, keyframe generator for sound, I would say. So I'm gonna jump into After Effects. Uh, so uh, if you have downloaded the trial or if you bought a plugin, you can follow along this and try it on. Uh, I'm just gonna show how I use it. So I'm gonna create a new composition. Uh, I'll just call this tutorial sound keys. 30 frames, uh, 90.0, this is okay. So. I'm gonna import, stop by importing a song. I have one here. And I'm gonna drag it to my timeline. And here's the song, I will just preview it for you. So that's the song. Uh, so I'm gonna create a new solid. I'm gonna call this sound keys. So what you do is that you create a solid and then you apply the effect sound keys. You will find it right here. You just apply it <clears throat> and then you will get this kind of, it just looks like rulers and stuff, but that is what, because you need to go up here to sound keys and uh, to the effects and choose your song in this audio layer tab. I'm just gonna increase the window size a little bit more so just like that and now if I preview so to for the purpose of this tutorial I'm gonna actually drag this audio layer to the chorus so I'm just gonna find the chorus sorry. Uh, soon And why I did that is because now we have a little bit more bass kicks. So if you look here, you see that these, uh, sorry for lagging a bit. As you can see, these uh, these bass frequencies are jumping up and down in the kicks, and that's what we want for making this easy. So I'm gonna show you how this works. So this is the frequencies, this is the middle frequencies the high frequencies and the low frequencies. The low frequencies is often the bass, the mid frequencies is a little bit of all uh, vocals and stuff like that. And high frequencies can be hi-hats or like crashes or stuff like that. So we're gonna actually, there's a kick like dunk, 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 and we're gonna uh, assign the kick to, to uh, a parameter so you will see how to use this. So if we just go and find the kick. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Yeah, so we will need to try to find it uh, like that, a bit higher even. As you see, this is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit crazy with all these bars, they are jumping everywhere. And to actually make it a little bit more smoother, we have this spectrum adjustment. And here we have uh, a couple of parameters. Scale, first of all, just raises all of them to a higher scale. We can put that on 1.2. Smoothness is just smoothing out so it becomes more like a ramp uh, instead of this crazy, just yeah, craziness. We'll put that on 0.5. And then you can increase uh, different type of uh, specific frequencies, but I won't do that. So. 
So what we want is this this uh, right bar to go. This is the output bar. And when it goes from zero to one hundred every and back to zero every kick. So we need to find. Uh, we need to find. Oops. The the frequency that like matches the best. So, so as you see now, it goes up. Down. Uh, maybe we can try this one. It's kind of hard actually, but it's, uh, it's uh, with different songs it can be differently uh, complicated to find this. Oh, didn't match at all. Oops. Let's do like this. Nope. Like that. There we go. Now you see it goes from 0 to 100 every kick. So, what we're gonna do now is we have this range 1. You can actually enable 3 different of these. So, you can have like 3 different uh, uh, parameters. Uh, and range 1 is the first one, which is uh, enabled by default. And uh, here we have three different follow-ups. I'm gonna use, uh, show you how to use them later. First, I'm gonna show you this. So we have an output min max, and this decides how much the keyframes, when it, this right bar is filled, how what are the keyframes gonna be then, and how much is it when it's not filled. So, for example, I'm gonna make a just a white box. I'm gonna call this box. I'm gonna make a solid layer. I'm just gonna scale it down a bit. Uh, let's say 50 75. That will be good. Now I have a white box. And let's say that we want this to go from opacity 0 to 100. If we go back to sound keys here, uh, can you just enable it again? And we have the range 1 here. We can just press custom. For default, it's actually from 0 to 100, but I will press it custom so. We have the minimum 0 and the maximum 100. And then just press apply. And this will actually generate keyframes for you. So if you press U on the keyboard while selecting the layer, you have all these keyframes uh, generated. And they will go from 0 to 100 when the kick comes. So yes, uh, you just select your box layer. And then you go to the opacity tab. And you press Alt on the keyboard while clicking this stopwatch this will open up a little bit more options here and you just have to press this press and hold this pick whip and just drag it down to the keyframe output one and then just press anywhere and if we disable the sound keys layer look now what we have we have like this instant we have uh, like this instant blinking at the kick so let's say that you want this to come in quickly and then fade out. That's when we can go and look at these fall off modes. So instant is just, it will just go in as fast as it will go out. And the linear is almost the same thing. But exponential, that's what we want. So if you click exponential, that will mean that it will go in instantly, but then it will go out in a different, uh, in a specific timing. So. One of these, uh, when you uh, write one, that means one second. It will take one second for it to fade out. So if we take one and just press apply. And now you don't have to sign it again because it's already assigned. So you just have to press apply every time you change anything here. So, you see now? Now it fades out. So it's really easy to uh, play with this. Uh, so if we want to make something a little bit more complicated so let's make a circle and we're just gonna put these uh, oops, snapping on and I'm just gonna align it in the middle and let's say I want this to scale from 50 to 120 let's go here and put from minimum 50 to 120 and one second to go back to the original scale. 
and then just press stopwatch, nay, alt and press stopwatch and drag this pip whip. That's it. Now we have this scaling. We have this scaling effect, which is pretty cool, but let's make it even more complicated. Uh, let's take this effect called turbulent displays and put it on. And uh, turbulent displays just displaces all the things. So let's go ahead and evolution is just meaning just moving the whole turbulent displacing. So let's go to the beginning of your timeline, press the stopwatch on evolution and the end of the timeline and just let's say 20, 20, uh, yeah. And let's see how that looks. So we have a nice movie. But let's say that we want it to displace more in the kick also. So normally, let's say we have 50 as normal, like this. But when the kick comes, we want it to go to 250. And then we actually have used, we can't change this uh, range one because we are actually using it on the scale. So let's just open a range two active. And as we, uh, we want this to, uh, we want this to react at the same frequency. So we can just copy this, uh, these position uh, numbers and just paste them on range two. So we get the exact same position. And then we use exponential here, uh, one second, and then use from 50 to 200, 250. Now let's say 200 and press apply and go down here to keys and press U again. Now we have two outputs. So remember that we're using output two now. And go here, double click on the amount Alt, press the stopwatch, take the pick whip, drag it all the way down to output 2. Boom. Press U to minimize all this. And let's see how it looks now. So as you see now, it's scaling and it's also uh, displacing a lot more when the kick comes in. So this was just a short example how to use sound keys. Uh, it's a really, really, really cool and uh, actually kind of when you learn it, it's kind of simple to use uh, plugin. And I will also show you in next tutorial on how to use these keyframes, generate keyframes uh, from sound keys and import them into Cinema 4D. So you can use their, you know, you can use it on any parameter in any effect in the whole After Effects, but you can also do that now in Cinema 4D. So I will show you a way I have. Uh, uh, I have uh, realized how to do it in uh, from After Effects and import it into Cinema 4D. So yeah, this was just like a short, short uh, tutorial on how to use this plugin. I definitely recommend you if you won't buy it, go in and just download a trial and try to play around with it a little bit. And uh, yeah, it costs like I think it's cost like ninety nine dollars. It's really worth it. So I would recommend you to buy it. But uh, yeah, so hopefully you like this and uh, you, I will see you next tutorial. So stay tuned this summer because there will come a lot of uh, nice tutorials. So yeah, thanks for that. Bye.